Hi everyone, welcome back to our um, uh, webinar series. This is the last of uh, this five-part series. Uh, so with so with uh, the just basically we're gonna be covering custom maps today, um, and this will mark the end of our visualization step-by-step -step series. I hope you have your uh, tabs open so that you can prepare to run through uh, some of the practices today. Um, and, and of course, you feel free to, you know, definitely you would have to spend more time um, on your own um, after today's lesson to just play around with the tools and just test it out yourself so that you can familiarize and understand how to use these tools better. Now, um, as a caveat, you don't need to know how to code. Uh, that's pretty much, this is uh, custom maps for rookies. Uh, you're not, you know, I don't know how to code, uh, frankly speaking. So uh, I, if I can assure you that if I can do this, uh, definitely all of you can do it as well. So um, just to kickstart, uh, I'm sure all of you know what Google is and also what um, the Google News Initiative is about. Basically, our mission is to help elevate uh, the quality of journalism, which is what uh, the news lab is all about and which is what uh, people like myself, who is a uh, teaching fellow for news lab, you know, that's what we do. We are actually we actually run workshops for journalists, editors, um, uh, university students who are majoring in um, journalism to just figure out, you know, how to improve their reporting skills and how to report more efficiently. Now, um, today we'll be covering, yeah, and of course, obviously, uh, there is this website, uh, our Google News Initiative website, g.co slash news training. I'm sure if you have had um, attended our previous trainings, you would know by now that uh, this is basically where we listed all our training um, content. So all the modules are there. So you can always feel free to browse through at your own time to pick out the lessons that you want to learn on your own. Now, um, today we'll be covering uh, how to make maps on Google Sheets, how to make maps on this tool called Google My Maps, and how to make maps on Flourish. I'll try to go as slow as possible. We have one hour today. Uh, and if you have any questions, as usual, feel free to, um, you know, put it out on the comment section and I will try to answer that. Of course, for those of you who are watching, um, you know, after the live streaming has been aired, I know a lot of you have opted to watch this after work hours on your own time. So if you have questions and this is no longer a live session, you're watching a recording of this, please still feel free to reach out to me if you're unclear about any of the tools that have been mentioned in any of these past, past five webinars in the series. Um, so yes, so let's move on to you know map making, right? So what's the here's a basic tip on map making, right? Um, we see this very colorful map of the uh, of the U.S. and you know there is this uh, basically it's a map on you know uh, the degree of support for the anti bacon agenda, right? But here's a very nice drift that shows you how to simplify and make your map look way much more better. Um, doesn't have to be so colorful. It doesn't have to have so many layers. And actually, obviously, as I've been showing throughout the last past five webinars, that less is always more. And so to kickstart, we'll start off with um, Google Sheets, which is the most simple and basic one. If any of you have tuned into um, the first uh, part of our webinar series of uh, fast and simple charts, we actually I actually showed you how to do a very simple map. Um, obviously, it's not very fancy looking because it's Google Sheets, but it gets the work done in like a jiffy. Like literally, you can get it done in less than a minute if you have all your data available. And so if you have all your country and your whatever values that you want to input, um, you have it in Google Sheets, you can easily just select uh, based on data range and the kind of like chart, uh, geo chart that you want to make. So the example that I used uh, the other day was for the uh, press freedom ranking, which you can see here. Uh, well, this is my map, but basically how I did it, I can actually delete this and I can do it again for you. 
Um, so this is the ranking from the uh, RSF. Uh, and this was basically a ranking of like, you know, basically the country, the region, and the different position that they had in 2019. So let's just put, uh, you know, the ranking and the country, right? Um, because that's what we want, we want, right? For like 2020, what's the ranking for uh, press freedom in each of these countries? I highlighted it in these two columns and then I go into insert and then I go into chart. Okay, so it's recommending me a line chart, but that's not what I want. What I want. So I would select chart type and I would scroll down until I see map, the geo chart. So I select this and automatically it's already showing me, um, you know, the ranking itself, uh, right? Um, and it would, shows, it would show me the color of the ranking. But, you know, what if I want to customize, right? So I can actually customize. I can change the background color, but as we all know, simple is best. So I'm going to leave it as white. Um, and I, once I go on Geo, I can actually change the color. So um, I don't like this red and green. So for example, I want to change it to like, say uh, the minimum value, I want to pick a cooling color, right? Uh, so maybe something like blue. Um, and then the maximum one, the ones that are like really bad, you know, they rank very, very low on like the press rank, press freedom ranking. So probably I want to pick like, you know, red or something, right? There you go. So, and maybe somewhere in the middle, like what's the tone that you can get in the middle? Maybe like um, orange-ish. Uh, go. So you can show like a degree of change. Um, this is what you can do. Uh, so then basically you play all of this. And if you're happy with this uh, map that you created using Google Sheets and you know, which you can then, you know, just scroll when you can see all the rankings, um, you know, uh, so if you're in Indonesia, it's 119, not exactly great. Malaysia is 101, not that great either. Thailand is 140. Obviously this region has a lot of red, right? So uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on these three little uh, dots and then we're gonna make sure that we publish chart first and select publish, okay. And then once we have the chart then uh, published, then we click on embed and we make sure that we copy this iframe up link, copy it and stick it onto your website. So that's basically how you embed um, your visualization uh, onto your website and it will appear as what it is, as what you see on this Google sheet, um, whereby, you know, when readers scroll over, they're gonna see the country and ranking. Uh, and of course, what you can also, uh, what happens is that, you know, if you were to change any of the values here, it automatically be reflected on the map that is already published on your website because it's, you know, basically it's responsive immediately in that sense. So this is Google Sheets, very simple, very fast, but it has its limitations because that's, that's what you can go. You can have to, you have to key in the country and a value that you want. What if you, have something that you want that's a bit more specific, like maybe an address, right? Which you can't key into these sheets and you know, so what do you do? Um, okay, here's the example that I showed. Then you would use my maps. So on my maps, there are two ways that you can utilize and you can also incorporate your, Google, uh, your data on Google Sheets to plug it into my maps, right? You could do it two ways. First of all, if you have your data in latitude, longitude coordinates, and you save it onto Sheets, and then you can import it into My Maps, right? Sorry, export it to My Maps. Um, and then the other way is if you have a detailed address, like a full address um, in your data sheet, which is that you have plugged onto Google Sheets, and then you then export it onto My Maps. So My Maps is taking data from Google Maps, which obviously, as we know, has all the addresses and the coordinates of all, um, like, you know, all over the world, right? So basically what you're gonna do is um, we're gonna like show a demo right now, but uh, before that, just I just need to remind uh, you guys that make sure that you have a column uh, that has latitude, longitude information 
addresses and place names to be safe. But if you don't have all this tree information, you should have at least, uh, well, ideally two of the tree, if not one of the tree, but like, you know, latitude, longitude, addresses, and place names. Now, we don't recommend you to import files on my maps with more than 2,000 rows, uh, simply because, you know, there you would experience, you know, problems with the data when you have massive data uploading. So, uh, and of course, if you need to import photos to go along with those um, addresses or coordinates, uh, you do bear in mind that you can only import 100 photos at a time. Uh, okay, so right now, why don't we just do a short demo on how to just import, you know, uh, a, data, a data set of latitude, longitude coordinates, and then, you know, we'll talk about how we can adjust the icon and color like I did here. And then how do we embed onto our website after that? And then also the fact that we can use this uh, later on on um, Earth Studio as well. So I will go to a sample that I have here. So I managed to find this um, random data on like, you know, uh, from uh, basically it was based just a lot of um, condo names in Singapore with latitude, longitude coordinates and their addresses. Um, so from some property website. So I figured, okay, maybe this can be a good example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my maps. Um, if you don't know what you know the uh, URL is, it's very easy. You just look up my maps, then you when you Google it, you would definitely see it pop up, right? Uh, here we go. Wait, it's not showing here. But when you do this. It's showing me on the show URL, the google.com slash mymaps. So when you go into that, um, then you can just uh, go to create a new map. And then wait for it to load. You can name your map. In this case, maybe I'll just show like properties and Singapore. Okay. And you can even add your description. Um, so, G, okay, and then you just click save, and then you here you go to import. So you import your data. You could import an offline file, uh, or you could import from Drive, which is what I'm gonna do because I already have this data set. Select. So it's fetching the document right now. So it's asking me what are the columns from the file that you know I want to put place marks, right? And they're already suggesting to you you should either pick addresses or latitude longitude pairs. So I'm choosing latitude longitude uh, as the first try because I wanted to see like you know how it's gonna look like. Um, we'll try again with just the address and see what we come up with. So I click continue. And then they also want like you know a column that I can use as a tile for the place marks. Um, so in this case, I will choose the condo name, and then I will click finish. So it's fetching, fetching, fetching. It will give it like a few seconds. There you go. So it has popped up based on the coordinates that I have in sheets. Now, uh, automatically by default, they will show you a blue icon. Uh, what you can do is you can actually change all of these markers. Now, I can change individual markers. So if I go, if I see all items and I click um, this little paint bucket, I would be able to change the color and the icon type for all of this by default, right? Or if I want to change individual ones, say for example, so I have to click this up, up and down that okay, button, I could then select like, maybe I just want to edit this marker. So for example, wait, let me pick another one. Maybe I just want to hit, change this marker. So then I hit, hit on the bucket again, and then I can then change this and I don't want all items. I just maybe want like wait, 
happen. Mm. Hang on. Here you go. Shows here this, but it's very weird. Okay, never mind. So for example, what I'm gonna do next is no, I don't want to change this. Uh say smaller. So for example, I can also change the color. So for I did this, and then I could also change the description that I want included in each of this uh, markers and I could click edit. Then I could just change it. I could also add a photo, add image. So hang on, let me do it slower. This camera button, add photo. So I, if I have an image that I have in stock, I can just upload it or I have an image URL or I could upload from Drive if I have it or I could take a Google image search if it's something that's templated. Um, I could also delete this particular marker by hitting this. So, yeah, so generally, and then I would need to also publish this now here. Yes, this three little dot up top, and then you just go to like uh, embed on my site. There, click the share button there. So I have to share this first. Okay, sorry, done. Okay, wait, so hang on. Because I'm using my office mail, so like it's a bit iffy. So yeah, so there you go. Um, embed on my site there, I have now an iframe code once I published it, that I can just stick it onto my website. And the other thing that I wanted to share was on like uh, how you could like, export to KML, KMZ file. And once you export this, you can actually stick it onto Earth Studio. Uh, I actually have some demo. Where is it? Um, I'm trying to look back on my maps. So this, so what I did was, okay, just as a refresher, we'll just go through the step-by-step. Step. We have to have a coordinate file in this case that, you know, I created on, uh, Google Sheets with the latitude, longitude, and also address. So, and then after that, I go to like, and I open my maps. And then after that, on my maps, I actually went to like, you know, and click on import my file. And then after that, I could like personalize by changing the color of the icon and the icon type. And I could like even rename it and save it as a new name. Now, um, so this, is the sample that I did with uh, the address. So I think I should show you the difference between using the address and using the coordinates. Because interestingly, um, if your address is not that accurate, uh, then you would see a result that's slightly different from the ones that you use with the coordinate. Now, um, I have this, I did the same step uh, with this sheet that I have, but this time I actually use addresses instead of latitude, longitude. So I'm just gonna do a demo, a quick one here so that you can see. Create a new map and then I let it load and then I click import, go back to Google Drive and then I get my data set from the sheets file and then this time, instead of choosing latitude, longitude, I unclicked it, I select address. And then I click continue. And then again, as a place mark, I put in a condo name. And then I hit finish. And then I let it load. There, so this is what you see. Now I will show you the one that I did with um, the coordinates. And this is the one with the address. So you can see that it appears like there are less markers. Uh, but actually when you zoom in, you realize that it's not that there are less markers, but that you know a lot of the markers are overlapping on top of each other. So it's very hard for you to like distinguish one from the other because it's overlapping. Like this has like two markers on top of each other. So is this. So because if, if you can't actually upload all of it, it would actually show you an error like, you know, that address is like 
it's not found on Google uh, Maps. So if, as you can see, it looks like it appears that it has less markers compared to this one, which I use coordinates. So then you can know that, all right, perhaps the data set that you have, the address was not accurate, meaning it didn't go down to the unit number or the, uh, or the lot number. So for example, if you have two condos on the same street, but you only listed the street address um, in your data set, right? Uh, which we can then go back and we can see a lot of these, like, look at that. I In the first example, I can already see Abela Gardens is uh, listed on Flora Road, but Azalea Park Condo is also on Flora Road. Again, you can see this, um, Blue Waters and Blue Waters 2, obviously two different condos, but and because they have two different coordinates, but they are on the same road. So this is what's going to happen, right? You're going to have overlaps on top of each other because you didn't have a lot number or a you know specific unit number. So which is why we always recommend um, if you don't, if your address is incomplete, it's better to use coordinates. Otherwise, you have to make sure that your address is very much detailed and complete. So yes, uh, required ranges to geolocate and markers is address, postal code, city. Ideally, you also have the unit a lot number. Uh, but if not, the most precise that you can never go wrong is always the coordinates. Right, and we already did this. Um, and yes, uh, what other stuff can you do with my map, my maps? My maps is pretty, you know, useful. I mean, it's not the fanciest looking uh, of all. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have seen much nicer uh, visualization on maps uh, that are not so primitive looking as my maps. But if you're short on time and you don't have a graphic designer who can whip something fancy up for you on the spot, then you should try using uh, iMaps. It does the job. So uh, we're going to talk about drawing polygon. And later on, we're also going to talk about drawing a line and how to use all of this. So I'll do a demo right now. So for example, I am going to just say, do like a uh, sample. And I'm going to say that, OK, let's look at, uh, um, OK, quarantine area. So for example, OK, and I just put a description. And then I hit Save. And then I would look up the address of where my quarantine area is. For example, I would choose maybe uh, I'm based out of Malaysia, so maybe I want to find somewhere that I know. Uh, you know, as an example, of course, you can always change this according to whatever location um, so of your reporting. So, for example, I know that there is an this is a hypothetical incident example that I'm giving here. It's not actually real. For ex um, so, for example, you're being told that okay, there's a breaking news. The government has just announced a quarantine, a new quarantine area in uh, this local district. As a local paper, you obviously will have to report on it, and you probably need to show people, your audience, where the quarantine area is or where the red zone for COVID nineteen is. Um, and if you were to list down just the whole list of uh, street names uh, with the addresses, like all of that, on your um, article. That's going to confuse like a lot. I mean, that's going to be a long list that people will just have to keep scrolling down to find if they're in the affected area. Now, uh, one easy way to do, go about it is to have your mind maps, right? So for example, um, so I just searched the general area. Uh, wait, hang on, I just want to. No marker, never mind. Um, Maybe I won't know that, you know, okay, it was around this area that they have like a quarantine area. So I need to go into like, you just go, go, go. You see this little icon here next to this arrow, next to this, you can see that there is this thing called draw a line. I click on it and I say add line or shape. If you're doing a driving route, you can also do that. If you're doing a biking route, like recommendation for readers, you can also do that or a walking route, you know, where's the safe zone for women to walk at night, for example. It depends on what the story is, right? So in this scenario, we want to draw a polygon, a shape. So 
we click on this app liner shape. And I know that my quarantine area is somewhere along here. So I'm just gonna like go and draw this, right? And then all the way here, and then here, there you go. Automatically, I see there's a shade, there's a shaded area already. Once I connect all the lines, right? And I can just change the name. I mean, I rename it as a quarantine area. And then I can give a description to it. So, um, government names on September this area is now under a two week for example okay and then i can even add a photo say maybe my photographer went to the ground and took a photo of you know maybe the police setting up a barricade to quarantine the area you know the bot wires and stuff so i can even add image right uh in this case i don't have actually have a photo so i'm just going to randomly search a bot search on google right Maybe I can just put this, select, wait for the photo to load, and as you can see, uh, there you go, better view now. There, the photo has already appeared here, right? I can even add more photos if I think that one photo is not enough. See, now it's one of one. If I hit plus, I can add more photo. If I delete, I can delete this photo, I can hit plus. So I can just find another photo. Maybe I want to put like, you know, break. Okay, so maybe I just need to put some soldiers keeping watch, right? Uh, okay, select. And then I'll wait for it to load. If you have your phone photo, own photos, obviously, because you have your own cameraman, you should be uploading your photo from your computer or from Drive. Okay, there was an error and everything finished. Now mind, then I'll just hit save. And then I could change the color of this polygon, right? I wanna change the color of it. Maybe I don't want it to be black. Maybe I want it to be like reddish. Yeah. Um, and I could like edit and add this if, if I want to later on. There you go. So now I have this um, shape, polygon shape uh, mapped out on Google Maps with my description and all that. And perhaps I, you know, then now want to test it out, right? Uh, so then I should hit share. Okay, and then now I could get my embed on my site so I can get this embed code. I hope this works because uh, code pen because I'm using a restricted account. Okay, so I go to code pen, I hit start coding. So if you're on a Gmail, it should work totally fine. If it doesn't work on my end, it's because I'm using a work email. I hope it works. Oh, yes, it, it did. Okay, so great. So now you can see the quarantine area. Um, the color hasn't changed though. Maybe it needs time to update. Uh, yeah. So basically the photo is there, description is there. Uh, and yeah. So you can see that it works just fine. I could even like take it out. Um, Stick it in again to see if the color change. There you go. Now it's reflective of the color. So you know that this is uh, so this is how it's gonna look like on your website. It's pretty basic, but it does its job. And if you wanna stick it, if you're like working for TV, uh, a TV news channel, right? Or uh, you are like, say, for example, a video editor and you want to incorporate this into your video production for like, say, YouTube news or whatever. So what you can do is you can use Air Studio. So this website called, uh, I actually did this already as a sample, earth.google.com slash studio. Uh, so you go to this website 
and then you hit like you know like project you know you want to open a new project and then you rename it quarantine area and then you hit start and then okay now you're in already right so uh obviously this has to go hand in hand with whatever video editing software that you're using basically you just use earth studio to incorporate the map the satellite visual of the location that you want and then you export it out so that you could stick it into your editing software and do whatever animation that you want of it um you can do still also do some basic animation on, on earth studio but uh the final editing cuts should be done on your editing video editing platform so here i'm gonna hit overlays i'm gonna hit import kml right oh but before that i need to actually export this out so remember i have this three little dots on my maps and then you go to export to kml pmz hit that and then just put there yeah, download so it automatically download the um the uh, file onto your computer so now i can go back to um earth studio and i hit overlays i go to import kml and i put upload from from computer and I will go look at downloads. And there you go. Quarantine area, KMC. Click open. And it's showing me all of this. I go like, okay, uh, basically this is what I want. Okay. Is it not, is it not showing? Hang on. Okay, now it's loading. So I have to double click on the quarantine area um, twice. So then it actually then it started loading. So as you can see, this is exactly the same as what you created on my maps, just to show you. This is what you have on my maps. If you publish it as is, it will look like this. But if you embed it onto Earth Studio, which by the way is also free, you can just open an account on Earth Studio. If you can't get access to Earth Studio, email me, I'll make sure that you get access to it. Uh, so then automatically you see that there, my red polygon is still there and this is the area uh, that, you know, that is shown. So I can zoom in, zoom out um, and control uh, left, right, the view that I want. And then I could even like, as you can see here, there's a camera position and, this, uh, and then if I scroll down, uh, I can also adjust the alt altitude where the camera is. And also I can adjust the camera rotation, you know, um, I can like do it pan, like maybe 20 degrees and then like, you know, have it tilt by like, you know, like 10 degrees. Maybe not a good idea. So, um, yeah, so I can adjust uh, here and there what I want to do with this uh, five there. Apparently tilting doesn't look very nice. So you can adjust and then you can play around with it. Um, so like like halfway through, maybe you want to like edit and then you want to do like 30 degrees. So and you have like different points. You got no. Um, Okay, there you go. So play, then it can just so slowly rotate from 20 degrees to 30 degrees. Yeah, so you can do all of this. And once you've done, you can render. This is just, you know, just to show you that what you can do with my maps um, and then translate that into Earth Studio as well. Now, uh, let's get back to our tutorial. Um, yeah, so I've done this, I've shown you this. So this was an example that I did. Like I did another example of um, uh, of like a COVID nineteen area red zone that I just kind of played around with it yesterday. Um, so yeah, you can do all of this. Uh, and yeah, the other thing that I wanted to show you is how to make a route, right? Um, so uh, 
I did like a demo version. So I did this as a demo version, but I'm going to show you how to do a rough one right now as well. Again, like, you know, you can always like share this so like you can like, uh, then, okay, then you can like export it out, right? Um, KMZ to KML file, and then you can stick it into our studio, the same thing as I did just now. Or uh, you can also not, um, you can also embed in your website. Just copy this iframe site so that I can show you how it looks like on your website once you upload it. There, it will look like this. So basically what I did with this was uh, I drew a bunch of lines, right? So I go back to my maps. I will do one short demo right now for you. So I just do create a new map. Okay, maybe I'll just ice cream walk with my like description. And then I start from Chinatown, say for example. Okay, I'm in Chinatown now and I want to start my ice cream walk. So for example, um, Perhaps I could then insert there. I'll add my first marker to show my starting point and maybe like I'll start at this foot court. Okay, just put there. Um, so start here, color one, that's gelato. Ever. All right, and you can even add photo as I mentioned, right? And then you could just like so look at the gelato photo. There we go select, and then hit save. And then I can even change the marker. Click on more icons. Let me find. Is there anything that's food in it? Sports and recreation places. Animals looks like there's no food icon. Um, I'm just gonna randomly choose one, like maybe a restaurant, right? All right, okay. Hit okay, and then maybe I'll pick like, uh, what color should I go for? Yellow? Uh, no, darker color. Purple. There you go. Purple looks nice. And so I start from here, and maybe I'll do like a route. Or then I click draw a line. Then I go from like at line of shape and then I go from maybe here, this ice cream parlor, I go to the corner, corner to left and then I stop here and then after that, oops, make sure you click on it again so that it stops and then I just don't want to put any uh, markers up here so I'm just going to add like a marker only here and then I'll put there. Color two, sorbet. So then I can put there a uh, lime sorbet with a mustache. I even add a photo again, and then I hit save, and then I can change the icon to whatever it is that I want, and then the color as well. Um, there you go. So I can keep doing this to show a route. So the sample that I made was uh, I just showed like okay. Uh, this, you know, maybe a crazy anomal man ran around and started stabbing people. So I could like just do this. Uh, and then after that, I stick it on to like uh, my site, right? And this is how it's gonna look. So we're gonna click on it, they're gonna see, okay, there's a photo of the culprit. And then this is the starting point. He started you know, going crazy on the street, Kajana Pinang. And, you know, I'm just gonna put there, you know, he ran out of hotel and then he ran towards the lobby of another hotel down the road where he starts stabbing people. And then, you know, so you can see, okay, he ran here and here. And then, so then you see the first victim. So you can do like a story. And this is how you can just work with like a new story by just doing this. And then you, once you put it up and stick it onto your website, especially if it's breaking news, like an incident like this, 
Um, you want something fast to sh show that where this guy went from start to finish and until you know he was actually caught by police. Um, so yeah, so this would be the fast and easy way to do it um, instead of like taking time to get a graphic designer to do things for you, to draw a map layout for you. You want this done and you can, I managed to get this done within like 10 minutes and then it's, it's done, it's up. So that's that, right? And now we'll move on to Flourish. Cause we don't have much time left. We only have another 20 minutes. So let's get this started. So if you have Flourish, uh, what do you do? You can, do you know that Flourish, you can actually also use uh, maps, but it's a little trickier than uh, what you see with my maps and also uh, sheets in that you actually need to have your GeoJSON file, which is the map file. So because the templates that they have um, obviously does not cover many Asian countries or states. Uh, in fact, the only um, Asian country that's covered here is India. If you have a world data or that you want to show in a visualization, you can just pick the templated world map. Otherwise, you need to hit blank and select uh, and basically upload your own um, GeoJSON file for your country map or your state map. Now, I started using the projection map template. So they have several. I would just show it to you what are the several templates that they have. Uh, they have like a lot of actually, yeah, the first is the projection map um, on Flourish, which as you can see, uh, only the only Asian country is India. So, um, and then if you scroll further down, there is also the treaty map. This is a bit, uh, this is rather complicated. So we'll not go into this today. Uh, and then the other thing that we'll have is the marker map. So I'll try to cover marker map, basics of marker map, and also the basics of projection map. So you have an idea on how to use this tool. And then uh, hopefully you'll be able to have time to play around with it more so that you can make better interactives out of uh, these two templates. Uh, but let me see. Okay, so we'll start off with the uh, first is the projection map. And I managed to get, oh yes, I managed to get the uh, Singapore uh, GeoJSON file for the for the whole entire uh, city state. And uh, I got the electoral boundary map, right? And then uh, what I did was show you the visualization that I have right now so you can see it and play along a bit. I'll explain to you how I did it. Um, so this file, let me just, so sometimes the data file that you did map file that you got, maybe it's not in GeoJSON format, maybe it's in shapefile, or maybe it's in KML or KMZ format, right? Um, then what you gotta do is you gotta go to one of those uh, websites that can help convert your file into GeoJSON format because Flourish only used GeoJSON. So one of the tools that I actually used because one of the data sets that I got uh, was not in GeoJSON, it was actually in KML. So I actually used this website my geodata.crowd, um, and it did the work just fine for me by converting the KML to GeoJSON. Um, so then I basically, okay, what I did with this uh, was that I first uploaded uh, on the region, uh, on the data, as by selecting the data tab, and on this region tab, I actually upload, when I hit upload data, I actually uploaded my, uh, Singapore electoral boundary geodesic file. And then after that, I wanted to, I will show you, see, basically I want, uh, I wanted to show you that, you know, which political parties won in the 2020 um, general election in Singapore. And so then I also had a CSV file uh, that the government uh, shared on its data website uh, of, you know, the different parties that won, uh, the different parties that won each uh, constituency seat. So I uploaded both data and then have it merge and then I managed to get this file. So now I will show you uh, by doing a demo right now. Now that I've explained it, I will do a demo. Um, I go for a blank visualization on a projection map template um, and then I go to data. And as you can see right now, it's empty, right? 
So what I did was I hit upload data and then I looked for the file electoral brown boundary 2020. Um, and obviously it was in KMZ, so I had to translate it to GeoJSON. So actually what I got was I after I converted, I had this file. Then I hit open and then it will show me and I hit continue. Then it will tell me all the rows are uploaded. Next, select the columns. Okay. So the geometrical shape is all here already. And uh, the name is correct, which is each constituency name. Um, there is no description by default because the data set is showing null. So I would just omit this for now. Uh, maybe you have a value if your if your data set has a certain value, like perhaps uh, a category or like you know a uh, a numbers denominator. So for value is usually a category or a numbers denominator that you will put in uh, if you have that in your data uh, in your file set. So I have this and then I go to preview. I can see the shape is like this already that I scroll over. I can see, okay, each uh, constituency is marked. Um, I could even select, okay, there's no theme. Uh, I can even select the kind of projection that I want. Uh, so I could like, this is default. I could like select a different one if I want to. Uh, so there's not much difference. Okay, maybe the slight difference. Um, so you just select the one that you want, okay? And then you could play around with, uh, this is the region's uh, layer. So the current field is this color. You can change it up. There you go. So I can see it more prominently. Um, and then I could even choose if I want to outline or no outline. I prefer to have an outline so I could show you the constituency. Um, and yeah, and so you could even, as usual, uh, if you follow the last Flourish lesson, a uh, footer is always for the source. So if you just say, sorry, this is a default thing that they have. I would just clear the default. Source name, I will prepare Singapore, or maybe like an you know, election condition. Or, you know, I can put there source URL, just stick whatever source URL that I have. And then it will automatically link it to my URL once I stick the URL. And I can just click on this and you will go to the URL. So, and I could also, let's see, have a header. Um, there, I could put there Singapore 2020 general election. Results. Right, and there you see that there is this. Um, okay, maybe this layout's not doing so well. Then. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so you can see that there is this um search icon here. Once I hit this, I can actually search the constituency that I want. In this case, I hit top. I can see that it's Bishan Topayo already, and it will show me as this constituency here. Now, how did I get the data on who won, right? Um, I managed to download the CSV file from the Singapore government website uh, that you know that they published. So then I have a CSV file of every constituency and uh, which party that won. So I go to data, right? And then I'm back at this regions tab, okay? Now there is this upload data. Now there's this little button next to upload data. I click on it. It says upload data and merge as a second option. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna hit upload data and merge. And it's gonna ask me which data set I want now, right? So I downloaded this folder called parliamentary general election results. And then I have this like, you know, uh, CSV file, which is the correct one. Hit open. And it will ask you to match which columns, right? So you will have to select a column that your CSV file and your, J your JSON file has in common. So in this case, both files, what they will have in common is the constituency name, right? So I'm going to select name for this, and it shows me Tanjung Pagar Jalan Besar. And then in this, I'm just going to like search constituency, okay? And then I'm gonna merge now. There you go, and then it's done.
right? And then I, I go back to, um, and then the value here, I could change the value itself uh, to the winner. Hang on, where's the, I want a political party. Oh, there you go. So it's in column L, right? Uh, so, so there you go. And then I have preview. Yeah, and then I can change the colors after that. Um, there you go, under palette. You can see under uh, regions layer, under this regions layer, there is a palette. I could just edit color palette and you know change it. Uh, if I want to like delete some of the colors that I don't want, remember what we did the last session. Um, I, then after that, I can use custom overrides and just to like fill up which constituency of which color or, or which political parties have which color. Uh, but if not, I could just pick a template. I need I feel like this color is too strong. I could pick like something else. Uh, this is a bit more obvious, so you can see the differences. Uh, not maybe pick something more pastel. Um, yeah, so you can adjust the color as you go along, and then after that, then as you scroll over again, um, okay, my pop up has disappeared. Um, but yeah, I did a demo here as well. So as you can see in the demo here, um, quickly, we only have 10 minutes to go. So then you would see that as you scroll over, you can see each political party, uh, which, which, uh, which political party won which seat, uh, and you, they even categorize it according as, accordingly as such. And you can see, I will show you the data set here. The value is L. Right, and then it should appear like this, right? Okay, yep. So uh, there, once you're done with this, then you can hit export and publish, and then you could like check it on the iframe code to see whether it works out well in code pen. Uh, let's see if it looks. Yeah, there you go. Just could even say like this codes. Yeah. Okay, so this is an example that I did uh, using the projection map on Flourish. So I've covered this data and merge steps. Oh, if you want to know, um, get more details on like how to like use this, there are two links that I would send. Um, it's basically, so Flourish, as I mentioned in my previous uh, webinar, that they have very good tutorial lessons um, on their YouTube page, but also on their website, on their blog as well. So if you need to know more, you can just watch these two video tutorials by Flourish. It's pretty good. Uh, next is the emoji marker map. I'll cover the emoji marker map and also the photo marker map which is under this um, template here. New visualization. If you scroll all the way down, you can see there is a marker map. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about emoji map and photo marker map today, um, since you might use it. Like, it's similar like to what I did with the my maps, you know, having uh, uh, markers to denote like an incident or an event, like the Amok man that you know, ran, ran crazy in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. So you can do something like that, or even for like touristy places that you want to highlight and recommend people or restaurants, whatever, eateries. So you can also use the emoji and um, photo marker map. Uh, what I did as a sample, I would show you with my emoji map is that I um, use back the uh, coordinates that I have. I don't know if you remember, the property coordinates that I got uh, from a real estate website. So I use those coordinates and then I stick it into the Singapore app, right? And then after that, I managed to get um, all these icons um, stuck in. So what I had was I just needed my um, condo name, sorry. 
um, underneath, and then I have my latitude, longitude, and then a marker, which I can just copy paste an emoji, and then uh, I could just, I mean, I just repeated, use, I repeated the same emojis, but you can put whatever emoji you want. And then if you have a photo, you can even put up the photo. So like, um, you know, if you have a photo that you save for every spot, then you can do that. And then um, once you have that under your location tab done, and once you put it in, you it basically look like this. And the cool thing is that you can also adjust the tilt and pan for this. So uh, I go into viewport and interaction. I actually adjusted the pitch and bearing for this. So if I want to do this, maybe I want to change a bit, like 30 degrees uh, bearing, maybe I want to change it to like 60. Okay. So I want to reduce it to 20. Okay. It's going to look like this. So you can actually change how you want to look at, uh, how, how, you want, how you want it to look. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much standard that, you know, that they will have this just to show you where it is located in the world. Uh, and as usual, you could have a header and a footer. So to do this, uh, I would also talk about uh, the, uh, there you go, yes, um, the photo marker map, which is this one that I also used back the same, uh, uh, basically the same coordinates that I had from that data set that I got previously. And then I'll just talk briefly about that and then we'll try to see. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. So uh, I will try to do a demo after this once I've explained this to marker maps. So again, this is the same thing. So like, you know, you can adjust the map style that you want and you can even adjust the um, pitch and bearing. Uh, and the difference is that, you know, like uh, these, like you have like on data, same thing I use for the same data, landmark, latitude, longitude. Uh, and the category is uh, basically the, uh, the marker itself, which is the photo because it's a photo marker map. So if you have photos that you want to like use it uh, to mark your location, you can upload it here. And then, um, and then I could have like this description listed as the address of the place. And then I can control the marker size, size under this tab, uh, this column as well. So that's pretty much how I go about it. Let me try to see if I can do a quick demo. We have a few minutes to go. So I will try to do a quick demo right now. Uh, if you don't have any questions, we'll end immediately after um, the demo session. As always, Flourish shows you a default template, right? Uh, which just as a guideline so that you know how to get yours done. Obviously, we don't want to look at this because we have our own data sets. So like you see inset map of uh, regions and categories is empty. They only had the uh, city, latitude, longitude, and marker in the photo. So pretty much this sums up that all I need is just latitude, like, longitude, right? And like whatever emojis that I want to use as a marker, I will just probably like copy and paste it from my emo from some website, you know, the emojis that I want to use. So um, taking into account that we have this data set we're going to use an example as an example i'm just going to try and use like a few just as a sample uh copy this and then i'll stick it in here and then i'll like uh change this okay if i go back to preview as you can see it's already no because i'm supposed to go all the way to Singapore, right? So it's no longer on this part of the wall. There you go. And I'll probably need to zoom. Okay, so now you've got it. And then you could change your map style. And then you could change your bearing and pitch if you want to. And then you can like, you know, have your 
header and you know with the title and then uh, you can also have your footer done as well right now this is one um and then you can click export and publish check on it iframe copy go to quick pen just to test it out Let's see if this works there you go yep uh you can zoom it out a bit if you want to show a bigger picture view of it okay so we've got this and the other one was the um photo marker map it's pretty much the same thing uh so we've got like a templated data again from flourish so you would have all of this markers in london which we're obviously not in london so uh we'll go to data again you see that on the locations tab you can see the landmark latitude longitude categories and then you have uh these other uh the inset map here it has all the regions so we're gonna have the need to get rid of this right because we're looking at singapore not um not the uk okay let's see if we can just uh manage this with just latitude and longitude coordinates um i'm gonna pick like coordinates here okay Okay, and then I also have um, the marker is all the images because this is a photo marker map. And then I have all the um, the size of the markers listed on this um, column E. Okay, let's see. Okay, right now it's not. I need to like get out of the UK and go to Asia basically. bit tedious there you go you can see my marker here okay there you go and then i could like uh, again do the whole like pitch and bearing my header to name the um the image uh the interactive and then also my footer to just list out the source now hit export and publish let's see if it works on iframe copy this go to code pen try it out let's see if this works Okay, it's taking a bit a while to load. Still says waiting for flourish. Um, if in the event, oh there you go. So it does work. Yeah. So obviously you don't need the GeoJSON file if it works with just latitude and longitude coordinates. So which is great. But if you wanna um have an inside map region, then obviously you can upload your GeoJSON file here. All right, I think that's about it. So if you have any questions, uh, you can always feel free to ask me. But if not, uh, if you're watching this later on after the recording has ended, uh, after the live recording a session has ended, then obviously you can email me the questions that you have. Um, and of course, you can also provide your feedback on this feedback form because we are trying to constantly improve our workshops uh, uh, content uh, to better fit you know, the needs of uh, working journalists. There. So we have passed the one hour mark. That's my alarm. So if there's nothing else, we'll end the session for today. And this will be the last of our um, webinar series. If you want to watch other webinars um, offered by the Google News Initiative, please check out on this YouTube um, GNI page. It has all the other recordings of the different tutorials. 
And we also have upcoming a webinar, live webinar series uh, conducted in multiple different languages. And it's on this website called newsonair.google.com. I will stick the link into um, into basically the comment section so that you can go check it out. Um, and yeah, so you can always register uh, your interests on so yeah I have copied a link you can take a look at it uh, and I'll be conducting a session in Bahasa Melayu so if you're a Malay native speaker and you would like to register for it you can select on this link we also have the English session which is conducted by my colleague and it would be on this link I am also speaking it. And uh, we're also con uh, what are Asian languages that we're also covering? We also cover we're also covering Korean and Japanese as well. So uh, you can take a look at the topics, and if it's of interest to you, you can always feel free to register to it um, for it. So if there's nothing else, thank you so much for your time. I hope this one hour was well worth your time to just basically pick up on uh, very fast tips and lessons on how do you make your own custom map for your uh, for your uh, media organization. So take care, have a good week, midweek, and I will see you guys hopefully soon. Bye.